Tesla's autopilot. What is it and when should you use it? In this video, I'm gonna show you what circumstances are great for autopilot and when you should probably avoid it. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Kaz and I've been driving full battery electric cars since 2014. So on this channel, you're gonna be getting opinions and advice from someone who has actually lived with electric vehicles instead of someone who has just gotten a few hours or a few weeks with an electric car. Welcome to LA traffic. And this is where I think autopilot is a game changer. For me, when I have to sit in traffic like this, which is pretty often, it really takes a lot of stress off my mind and even off my body. So what is autopilot? We can think of it in two different planes, your hands and your feet. So for your hands, it is keeping the car centered between two lanes. And with your feet, it's maintaining whatever speed you set it to and maintaining a distance between you and a car in front of you, depending on how you set that. Tesla calls these two different things auto steer and traffic aware cruise control. Traffic aware cruise control is just Tesla's name for adaptive cruise control. And that's it, they merge those two systems into one thing and that's autopilot. Now there is a difference between regular autopilot that comes with every Tesla and the full self-driving package that you have to pay extra for. And we'll get a little bit into that a little bit later. Today we're talking about just the regular autopilot, which is the one that comes with all Tesla vehicles. Autopilot is really meant for the highway, although you can use it on streets. Just be aware that it does not recognize stop signs or, or traffic lights so you will have to manually brake. But if I'm in stop and go traffic where it's really gridlocked, or if I'm on a street that's basically like a highway, I will sometimes use autopilot. It is important to know that autopilot is not full self-driving, and we'll get into that name in a second. But what autopilot is, is kind of the next level of cruise control. You cannot go to sleep while autopilot is on. You shouldn't be having a seven course meal with a table in front of you or something like that. You do need to pay attention. Every time you engage autopilot, there's a little thing on the screen that tells you, put, keep your hands on the wheel, be ready to take control at any time. And you should take that seriously. Now, if you come at this with a cautious mindset and you're ready to take over, I think autopilot is completely safe. If you have the idea that autopilot is 100% foolproof, that it's perfect, that you can just let go and not pay attention, you're gonna have problems. And I suspect that a lot of the accidents that you've heard about in the news where they say, you know, Tesla autopilot causes an accident or whatever, but my guess is the majority of those are user error, are people that think they can just not pay attention and the car will be perfectly fine driving itself. Tesla gives you warnings, I think, every time you turn autopilot on, to keep your hands on the wheel and be prepared to take over. Either people don't read it or they ignore it. Now, even though you are supposed to pay attention, you're supposed to be ready to take over at any time, I know that sounds like it's very stressful and maybe for the first couple times that you do autopilot, it is a little bit stressful. But once you get used to it, once you get used to that technology, it really relieves a lot of stress from the monotony of this type of driving. So monitoring the car is less stressful than driving the car on its own, especially in something like this, where it's relatively low stakes. If all of a sudden autopilot disengages, I'm going 10 miles an hour, I can very quickly take over and it'd be no problem. So I feel like autopilot is like 90% there, good enough for everyday driving and for the stuff that I do, and definitely good enough for me to not have any desire to have to pay extra for full self-driving. Regular autopilot doesn't stop at stoplights, doesn't stop at stop signs. You need to stop the car for those things. If you do want it to stop at stoplights and stop signs, you can upgrade to the full self-driving package, which is currently $8,000 to buy it outright or $99 a month at the moment. Now those prices fluctuate every once in a while, so look it up for yourself. I did a video on full self-driving if you are interested in that. Specifically, I did it on Navigate on Autopilot, which in theory, your car should drive from point A to point B without your intervention besides keeping your hands on the wheel. And I think even that is going away because they have cameras right there that'll see if you're paying attention. I don't think it's worth the money for where it's at right now, but you can be the judge, watch the video, watch other people's videos and see if that's something you might be interested in. Whenever you have a chance to try autopilot, whether it's Tesla's autopilot or any other company's semi-autonomous driving, try it out and just know that the first couple times you do it, 
it is going to be a little bit stressful. It's weird having the car drive itself. So don't really judge the comfort of using autopilot or whatever kind of system on those first couple of tries. Just know like anything new, it's gonna take a little bit getting used to. And in my opinion, it is so worth getting over that little hurdle of being nervous because this is just, ah, I am so happy to have autopilot. <laughs> Teslas also have adaptive cruise control. You still have to steer, but the acceleration and braking is done for you. So if you are uncomfortable with having the car steer itself, maybe you can start off with having the car accelerate and brake on its own, get a feel for that, and then try full autopilot when it steers itself. Try it in steps if it's something that is not comfortable for you. Autopilot is not perfect, so here are some problems and inconsistencies that I've noticed. With some things like holding the steering wheel, sometimes I can tell that I'm holding the steering wheel. See right now, it says I'm not holding it. Sometimes I can tell that I'm holding the steering wheel and sometimes I can't. With Braking, most of the time it's nice and smooth braking if there's a car in front of me. Sometimes it waits a little longer and like really gets on the brakes. Don't know why. Same with accelerating, most of the time going from a stop or like a really slow roll to get up to speed is nice and smooth. Every once in a while we get more of a boost of acceleration. Now if I use my turn signal, it turns off auto steer. Most of the time it puts it on to adaptive cruise control. It'll leave that gap between you and a car. But other times it says that it's just in regular cruise control and it says cruise control will not break because you know, it's cruise control. Why that happens, I don't know. I haven't found a pattern, uh, but that's a little bit dangerous. If you're used to having it on adaptive cruise control and then suddenly it's not, that could be problematic if you're thinking that the car is gonna stop. So always be ready, no matter what you're on. Cruise control, adaptive cruise control, autopilot, be ready to take over. We're not there yet where we can rely on the car 100%. I'd love to hear your thoughts on semi-autonomous driving. If you're looking into getting an EV, is an autopilot type thing something that is a requirement for you? Or is it something that you don't care about? Or maybe something in between? Would love to hear from you, let me know. If this video helped you out at all, please give it a like, you can subscribe, or you can get me a coffee by going to Kofi, link down below. Thank you so much for any support, I really appreciate it.